Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most interesting handheld gaming PCs to hit the market in a very long time. What we've got here is the all-new Ioneo Flip DS, and what makes it really interesting is this is the first x86-powered gaming handheld with dual screens. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with Ioneo, and right now with the Flip, they've actually got two different variants, so you can opt to get one with a built-in keyboard, or you can go with the DS model, which actually replaces that keyboard with a 3.2-inch IPS touchscreen. Now we can actually use this touch screen for our performance metrics, we can actually browse the web on it while we're playing a game, or you could set it up as a dual screen handheld retro console. We're going to take a look at a lot of different things that we can do with this. Go ahead and get this thing booted up. You can log in super quickly with the built-in fingerprint sensor right here. And right now I've got the smaller screen working as a secondary monitor, but if we press this dual screen button right here, it'll bring up IA space right on that smaller IPS. So we can actually tweak and tune all of our settings with this handheld directly from that screen. Of course, the main claim to fame here with the DS is that secondary display, but we've got a lot of other great features built in here, like the fact that Ioneo actually added an Oculink port to this so we can connect an Oculink eGPU and really up that performance on a larger monitor. And if you happen to only own a Thunderbolt eGPU, not to worry because this does have full function USB 4. You can connect a Thunderbolt 3 or a Thunderbolt 4 eGPU to this device also. Taking a look around the Flip DS, up front you might notice we do have dual stereo speakers and a 3.5mm audio jack. Not much else going on around the sides here, but it does look like quite a thick boy. It's actually really comfortable to hang on to, and as you can see those buttons need to be flush so that screen can close. I think they came up with a really nice design, we will take a closer look in just a second. But moving around back you can see we do have a micro SD card slot for easily upgrading the storage. Two USB-C ports. Now one of these is USB 4, the other is USB-C 3.2, plus we've got that Oculink port. Oculink comes in really handy for much faster eGPUs. We've done a lot of testing on the channel, and I really want to see how this thing performs, so we'll get into that by the end of the video. The built-in controls actually feel really nice, but I'm not sure about this D-pad. Now, Ioneo's regular D-pad is my favorite on the market. This is definitely a lot different from anything else that they've done. It's using dome switches underneath, and as you can see, it's almost flush with the unit itself. So I will have to get into some testing to see how it performs with fighting games. And when it comes to the analog sticks, of course, these are hall-based. Again, these are recessed, so we can close that screen. They're actually really nice. Uh, it doesn't take much to reach over to them once you got this thing in your hand. We've also got the dedicated Ioneo button. And they've also added an optical mouse sensor for easy navigation. Plus, we've got our power slash fingerprint sensor, so we can easily log in. And over here, we've got our volume rocker and a dedicated second screen button. So this will allow us to kind of switch modes on that secondary screen, which comes in really handy. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs of the Ioneo Flip DS, for the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 7840U, based on Zen 4. But they do have another option with the 8840U, so you could go Ryzen 8000. I've already done some testing on some other systems, and performance really isn't far off from each other. I've got the 7840U version, 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3, and a boost up to 5.1. With this unit, through Ioneo Space, we can do up to 28 watts. We also have that built-in AMD Radeon 780M iGPU, based on RDNA 3, 12 compute units up to 2700 MHz. You can opt to pick this up with either 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of LP ddr 5 x running it up to 7500 megatransfers per second. It uses an M.2 2230 PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. And Ioneo has always done a bang up job with their displays. This is no different. We've actually finally got a 120 hertz display from them. It's a seven inch 1080p, 368 pixels per inch, 400 nits of brightness, and 100% sRGB. Now that covers our main display, but we've also got that secondary display. It's a 3.5 inch IPS with a resolution of 960 by 640, bringing that aspect ratio to three by two. And this is gonna be perfect for playing games that need a second screen like DS, 3DS, or even Wii U. I'll tell you what, I've been doing a lot of 3DS emulation on this and it's pretty awesome having that second display. But we could also use this as a performance overlay. We could use it for videos. We could actually even play a second game on that bottom screen while we play on the larger screen. It's really up to you. 
When I first saw the INEO Flip DS online, I thought it wouldn't be as comfortable as it is, but it's very ergonomic. The way they've got this set up sits right in the palm. You can reach all of the buttons, analog sticks, triggers, and D-pad without any issues, and this optical mouse up here actually works out really well. I should probably go ahead and adjust the sensitivity from the window settings, but yeah, I mean, you can definitely navigate the full operating system with this. But remember, we've also got that touch screen up top. The rear triggers are linear, they're hall based, and uh, they've got a nice little throw to them. And the way they've got these set up, they kind of angle in when you push them down. I've played a few racing games on this, and we've got plenty of throw to get that linear action for the gas and brake. But uh, the one thing I'm concerned about here is the D-pad. Like I mentioned, I and Neo's D-pads are some of my favorites, but this is much different than they've ever done before. Using dome switches here, not a lot of roll to it, so we have to get into testing. But the analog sticks feel just fine. I mean, overall, I think this is set up quite nicely. Now, I know everybody's wondering about this secondary screen, because after all, I guess that's the main draw to the Aya Neo Flip DS. And it's actually quite neat. Out of the box, it's set up with Aya Space. And if you're familiar with these Aya Neo devices in Aya Space, you know we can basically control every aspect of our handheld from this software. You can also totally disable the screen if you'd like to, but from Aya Space, I think this is really cool. While we're playing a game, we can fully adjust that TDP, we can set up a different fan curve, we can remap all of the buttons, set up our gyro, change the vibration intensity, and this screen is detected by the handheld as a second monitor. So from the window settings, we can set this up to extend our main display, we can set it up as a second display, but Aya Space can always take control of this. And uh, setting it up as a secondary display allows us to do several different things here. But one of the main things a lot of people are going to be doing is emulation on this. And uh, as you can see, I'm running some 3DS right now using the Citra emulator. And this is cool because we've basically got a more powerful 3DS right now. And I can upscale that resolution on both of these screens with that 7840U Ryzen APU. So for emulators that need a second screen or can support a second screen, we've always got this option here. And uh, some that come to mind, obviously Citra, which we're running right here. Wii U can also utilize the second screen using the SimU emulator. And there are DS emulators on the market that you can set one up with. So a uh, really awesome little feature here. And I guess that's one of the main draws. But since it's just connected to the handheld as a second monitor, we can always use dual apps. Right now, I've just got a browser going with some YouTube, wanted to watch the new game theory, definitely going to miss MatPat, but I also wanted to play Spider-Man Miles Morales. So let's go ahead and start this video, get back to the game, got some YouTube going, and this would come in handy for playing a walkthrough on the bottom screen while you're trying to get through your game up top. You could also set up basically any other application on that bottom screen. Next up, I wanted to test out this D-pad. We've got Street Fighter 6, 1080p, medium settings, and I'm just at an 18 watt TDP. The 7840U handles it just fine. And it takes a little bit of getting used to uh, because it's such a flat D-pad, there's just not a ton of roll to it. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen a handheld with these dome switches in the D-pad. In fact, the PS Vita used dome switches with its D-pad, and that one is great. Love the fighting games over there. But since this one is so flat, it does take some getting used to. But I gotta say, one of my favorite things about having this secondary display is the overall control we can do while we're playing a game. If you're doing a lot of testing, you wanna get the best battery life or best performance, you can always move right down to the screen and adjust your TDP using Aya Space on that second display. Another thing we have in the quick access menu with that secondary display is an on-screen keyboard, which will definitely come in handy given that we are running Windows on this machine. We've got a really good idea of how this thing's going to perform because after all, it is using the Ryzen 7 7840U. You can go up to 28 watts. You can also set it up so it'll boost up to 30. A lot of handhelds on the market with that, and I could go through and test more games in this video, but I'm going to save that for my full review because the last thing I wanted to take a look at here was the Oculink interface. And to test this out, we're gonna be using the new One X GPU. Basically, it's an Oculink eGPU. It also supports Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB 4. But since we've got Oculink, we're gonna be using this. Now I'm only plugging in USB Type-C here for power to the handheld. Next up, we're gonna plug our Oculink in. And if you're not familiar with the One X GPU, it's actually an AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT with eight gigs of VRAM. We've also got a little boost button here that'll allow it to boost up to 120 watts, and we can get some amazing 1440p performance out of this eGPU. 
right off the bat, the INEO Flip DS detected it. I actually didn't even have to download a driver. You may have to in the future, but this just went right through with the process. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 7840U, 32 gigs of RAM. We've still got access to the Radeon 780M iGPU, but instead of utilizing that for gaming, we've got the Radeon RX 7600 MXT. And I'm gonna be running this in 120 watt mode, so we do have that boost button on. And now we can really up the settings and resolution with this device. Now you could always use the built-in screen to play this game, but I've noticed that performance is definitely cut down. That's why I have the built-in screen for the Flip DS deactivated right now, or just solely using that external monitor. I've got the TDP for the Flip DS set to 28 watts so we can get the maximum performance and we don't have to worry about battery because it's actually being charged or powered right now from the 1X GPU. Forza Motorsports, high settings, 1440p, and we're getting an average well over 80 FPS. I mean, it looks amazing. And there's no way that the Radeon 780M could give us this kind of performance at 1440p. We can basically play any AAA game we want here. And I've said it before, I really do consider the Radeon RX 7600M a good high 1440p card or ultra 1080p. And with 1440p, you may need to activate a little bit of FSR, but uh, overall, it's definitely going to put out much better performance than the iGPU we have. My first impressions of the INEO Flip DS are really good. I mean, it's definitely a niche product given that we have that secondary display, but that can be used with an on-screen keyboard. You can run a different app on it. Build quality here is awesome, and I expected it from INEO. A uh, D-pad does take a little bit of getting used to. It's something that could definitely be done. Not my favorite D-pad that INEO has released, but uh, given the form factor here, they definitely had to do something a bit different to get it in there because we've got that fold over or flip over screen. And of course, when it comes to performance, we've seen a lot of handhelds with the 7840U. Definitely one of the best chips to be using in a handheld like this. When it comes to emulation, we can basically run anything. And we do have the boost up to 28 watts or a little over 28 watts through IA space. I personally think they've done a really good job here and it's much different than any other handheld on the market. Again, I do think it's kind of a niche product, but uh, I think there are people out there that would definitely enjoy getting their hands on something like this. I'm going to spend a couple more days with it. I do have some other emulators set up like DS and Wii U with that secondary display. Definitely keep an eye out on the channel for my full review video. We will be testing some more PC games and things like that. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning a little more about the INEO Flip or the Flip DS, I'll leave some links in the description. They've actually got their Indiegogo up and running right now. Several different models to choose from. You can also opt to get a white or the black one, which we have here in this video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.